Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be looking at some striking OCT images of a spontaneous coronary artery dissection, or SCAD. Uh, we're going to talk about the mechanism of how SCAD forms and how to manage it. The patient is a healthy and active 30-year-old uh, woman uh, with no medical history. Uh, she uh, presented to our ER with a persistent chest pain after uh, some vigorous ex exercise. Her uh, ECG and echo were completely normal. Uh, however, her initial troponin was 2.5 uh, nanograms per mil, so she was referred uh, to cath. And on cath, her RCA and circumflex were uh, completely normal. Uh, her LED is shown here. Uh, we see the uh, clear corporate lesion in the high mid LED. So uh, let's just uh, stent this uh, juicy lesion and be uh, done, right? Well, frankly, if this were a 70 year old woman with the usual cardiac risk factors, uh, we probably would have uh, just stented the LED uh, without a second thought. However, uh, this case was a little strange. Uh, there is a clear severe stenosis in the mid-LED that for all the world looks like an atherosclerotic plaque. However, it is isolated. Uh, there is no other plaque anywhere else. And the patient is a young, healthy woman uh, with zero risk factors. So uh, we thought that it would be odd for her to have an isolated severe atherosclerotic plaque in the LED. Plaque rupture uh, would be strange as well. So, could this be SCAD? Uh, to resolve the mystery, uh, we thought that it would be useful uh, to do OCT. So uh, here is the OCT run. Uh, let's uh, look at it carefully. Um, as we move through the run, uh, you see one lumen becoming two lumens. Uh, this is diagnostic for a dissection. The false lumen eventually completely envelops and compresses the true lumen. Uh, you'll see a diffuse uh, orange signal in the false lumen, uh, which is intramural uh, hematoma. And if you look carefully, there actually is no dissection flap. There is no point at which the false lumen communicates with the true lumen. This is a case of SCAD, or spontaneous coronary artery dissection. So uh, here are the two lumens. Uh, you can see our OCT catheter in the true lumen and the crescent-shaped false lumen uh, next to it. Further down, uh, the false lumen has gotten a lot bigger and is completely surrounding the true lumen and compressing it. The uh, diameter of the true lumen here has been compressed to just 1.5 millimeters. Remember, this is the high mid LED. It should be a lot bigger. The false lumen here is about 4 millimeters. We also see that the false lumen is filled uh, with uh, intramural hematoma, which is this uh, diffuse orange glow. Essentially, this is blood in the false lumen. The deeper portion of the false lumen looks dark uh, because the blood in the false lumen is blocking the OCT signal. And um, if we again uh, look carefully at this run, uh, we actually don't see a point at which the false lumen communicates uh, with the true lumen. There is no intimal tear uh, in the wall, so there is actually no dissection flap in this case. Uh, what we are dealing with uh, is a bleb of bloody intramural hematoma that is contained entirely in the wall of the LED. So uh, how does SCAD form? Well, one common hypothesis is the outside-in hypothesis. The idea is that the false lumen forms due to a spontaneous rupture of microvessels in the media or adventitia uh, that results in bleeding inside the arterial wall. This bleeding results in a hematoma in the wall, and as the bleeding continues, uh, the intramural hematoma expands and can eventually compress and possibly occlude the true lumen. If the intramural hematoma continues, uh, continues to get bigger, uh, then the intima can actually tear. Uh, this will decompress the intramural hematoma, but can result in a flail dissection flap of the torn wall, uh, which can itself obstruct and occlude the true lumen. So uh, with the mechanism of SCAD uh, formation in mind, uh, the, uh, the classification of SCAD becomes clear. This is the classic YPSAW uh, classification. Uh, if the intramural hematoma remains contained in the arterial wall and does not extend along the length of the blood vessel, then you have type 3 SCAD that looks a heck of a lot like your usual atherosclerotic plaque. 
If the intramural hematoma starts extending longitudinally, then you progress to type 2 SCAD. Now, with both type 2 and type 3 SCAD, if rather than or in addition to extending longitudinally, the hematoma starts expanding radially into the lumen of the vessel, then the vessel can become occluded. If the intramural hematoma expands to the point of causing an intimal tear, uh, then you have type 1 SCAD. Uh, this results in a communication between the false lumen and the true lumen, the formation of a dissection flap, uh, which is the classic white line that you can see angiographically. In some cases, a small focal tear can actually be helpful because it decompresses the intramural hematoma and can result in restored flow in the true lumen. However, the opposite can and uh, does happen as well. The uh, flail flap can itself obstruct the true lumen, and in addition, blood flow from the true lumen can enter the false lumen via the endomal tear, which can enlarge the tear, uh, further extend the false lumen, and rap rapidly uh, precipitate uh, an occlusion. So our uh, patient's lesion looks, uh, we think, most like type 3 SCAD with partial occlusion of the true lumen. Now, uh, SCAD almost always heals by itself, and uh, revascularization is very challenging and is fraught uh, with risk. So for the vast majority of SCAD cases, uh, management is conservative. Uh, patients are generally hospitalized for a few days for monitoring and uh, supportive care. The exception are unstable patients. If the patient has ongoing chest pain and an ischemic ECG or is in cardiogenic shock or has salvos of sustained VT or VF, or if the left main is involved, then more aggressive therapy should be considered. For unstable patient, this includes PCI or cabbage and mechanical circulatory support if needed. Sometimes ECMO and even impella could be required. Uh, a recent small case series published in CCI in January 2021 uh, demonstrated the feasibility of using Impella uh, to support some of the sickest uh, SCAD patients. Now, um, there is unfortunately not a lot of clinical evidence to help guide medical therapy in SCAD patients. Uh, much of the evidence is based on uh, expert uh, consensus and limited studies. And even anticoagulation is controversial, uh, given the potential uh, theoretical risk of extending and worsening the uh, intramural hematoma. Uh, it is thought, though, uh, to be reasonable to discontinue heparin once SCAD is diagnosed, unless there is clear uh, intramural, uh, intraluminal thrombus. Uh, aspirin uh, up to one year uh, is uh, reasonable. Um, the benefit of adding P2Y12 inhibitor, however, is unclear. Uh, in fact, there is a recent report from the DISCO registry that suggests that adding a P2Y12 inhibitor may actually cause harm at one year. Um, beta blockers, uh, which can help uh, blood pressure and heart rate control to reduce shear stress, are thought to be helpful. And the benefit of statins uh, is also unclear, and they are only really suggested for patients who have a uh, pre-existing dyslipidemia or another reason uh, for a statin. Uh, if the patient was unstable and did undergo PCI or cabbage, uh, then the usual DAPT guidelines apply. Um, there is limited data on post-SCAD management as well. Uh, SCAD patients often uh, do have additional vascular abnormalities, uh, classically fibromuscular dysplasia or uh, FMD. So uh, CTA or MRA is uh, generally uh, recommended at some point. Um, overdoing physical activity, uh, such as uh, uh, exercising to exhaustion, extreme endurance training, uh, elite uh, professional sports or weight training uh, should be avoided. But in general, it is thought that moderate exercise is likely overall beneficial. The uh, rate of recurrence uh, is thought to be anywhere from 10 to 30 percent, but factors associated with recurrence are not really well understood, uh, but is thought to include FMD, uh, extreme exertion, or uh, severe emotional stress. So our patient was stable, uh, so we opted to treat her uh, conservatively. Uh, we did stop her heparin. Uh, we started aspirin and a beta blocker. We did not add a P2Y12 inhibitor. Uh, her lipid panel was uh, completely normal, uh, so we did not add a statin. Uh, we did do a CTA, which unfortunately was uh, negative for any other uh, vascular abnormalities. Uh, she otherwise had a boring, 
uneventful hospital course and went home a few days later. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, the key here is that intravascular imaging can be very useful uh, when you are trying to distinguish between SCAD and atherosclerosis. This can be important because the treatment strategy can be very different. And as we saw in this case, OCT can provide especially clear images. Uh, we went over a possible mechanism for the formation of SCAD, uh, starting with the uh, spontaneous rupture of blood vessels inside the arterial wall itself, uh, which causes an intramural hematoma that can, in some cases, get so big uh, that it eventually tears the intima. And remember that the treatment of SCAD is almost always conservative unless the patient is or becomes unstable, uh, at which point the PCI or cabbage uh, can be considered. Thank you for watching.